Hello, how are you doing? I am continuing on uh, drinking my way through my advent calendar of teas and uh, so today's tea is a supreme green matcha tea uh, which I love matcha so I'm enjoying that and also there are more best books of the year lists coming out and just this past weekend The Guardian finally posted their best books of the year so I've just been looking through the list and you know figuring out which ones I haven't read which ones I have read and uh, agreed with and uh, some I really didn't agree with and uh, so I'm gonna go through this list and give descriptions of all the books. Um, I'm just focusing on the fiction section because fiction is mainly what I read and this was uh, written by Justine Jordan and I do kind of like it when a uh, best books of the year list is just authored by a single journalist because um, then you just get you know one person's perspective on it but then of course that makes it necessarily limited because uh, there's only so much that one person can read in a, in a single year and so I do kind of wish that she had list how many books she's read this year and um, you know it'd be interesting to know what books maybe she didn't have time to get to reading yet and, and why that's not on the list but anyway <laughs> I'll get into all of the books. Um, the, she listed 38 different uh, books of fiction and uh, so I'm going to go through each one. I personally have only read 18 of these. Um, um, which is you know fairly good and I think I have more of a hit rate of um, reading these books because uh, this is a, a UK newspaper and um, so with UK books just generally I'm a bit more up on them you know than like American publications or, or things published elsewhere. Now a lot of these books, um, if you keep up with what is being published over the course of the year, you'll have probably heard of a lot of these and in so in a way that's slightly disappointing, you know, that the, these are the kind of books you would expect to see on a list like this. But at the same time there are a number of the books um, which uh, aren't, I don't think, you know, massively popular books and aren't as, you know, well known as as other books and um, there, there are a few books which I hadn't even really heard of yet so um, I did find this informative and interesting uh, but to start off um, the very first book she mentions is one that you will have almost certainly heard of of Sally Rooney's new novel Beautiful World Where Are You and I uh, I of course people go on either readers go on either side of the fence of liking Sally Rooney or disliking Sally Rooney's fiction and I personally do really enjoy uh, um, her fiction and especially this novel which I think is one of our most interesting and complex about a group of four uh, young Irish people navigating uh, modern life and uh, class and uh, money and uh, relationships and the way she handles that I think is really intelligently done and engaging and I did really care about the the characters and um, so yeah I, I think this is a great novel that I would really recommend if you haven't ever tried her and have been a bit nervous about trying her fiction, you know, give it a try. <laughs> Next is a novel which has only just been published recently and um, and if you've read it already um, like good for you because this novel is 928 pages long. It is The Books of Jacob by Olga Tokorczyk uh, who is a Nobel Prize laureate and a winner of the International Booker Prize, a much lauded Polish author who's written this great big epic and which has been years in the making and just years in to get it translated into to English and uh, so this is a book about Jacob Frank um, who's a uh, 18th century uh, leader of a heretical uh, Jewish splinter group um, who had also at one pointed uh, had uh, converted to Catholicism and Islam and uh, so yeah it was quite a controversial mysterious figure and I think it looks at his life from many different angles and looking at different periods of, of history. Um, it is a very long novel but it's also uh, structured in I think uh, quite an experimental way in that it uh, it sort of goes forward and then the pages go backwards uh, at, at some point. Um, so I, I'm really interested to get into this but you know it's a question 
question of finding the time for it. I did enjoy Tkhotchik's uh, novel Drive Your Plow Over the Bones of the Dead uh, very much. I thought that was like a, a fascinating but also like kind of like darkly hilarious novel. Um, so you know, I am keen to try um, this but it's one of those books that I slightly worry that people will just you know almost automatically praise if they'd got to the end of reading it because if they invested that much time in reading a book you know they they want to feel like it was worthwhile um, so there is this slight issue with um, really long novels like this. Crossroads by Jonathan Franzen. He is another great big new epic book in the first part in a trilogy and this is about a family in the 1970s during times of, of cultural and social change and uh, so following the different points of view of, of this family and, uh, yeah, and the, the arguments and uh, the, the relationships they, they share with each other and I, it's another book that I have been interested to get to but it's just a question of finding the time. Another big publication from this year <laughs> another Nobel laureate, uh, Kazuo Ishiguro's Clara and the Sun, uh, another book um, that uh, people are very divided about. Um, there are some really massive fans of uh, this novel and then there are some big detractors of it and I am a big fan of it. Uh, the story of an artificial friend and her journey in the near future as she is acquired by a girl and her family and the um, slightly sinister reasons behind why she was purchased by this family and following that that storyline and it raises so many issues um, to do with modern society and faith and uh, relationships uh, that I found it really meaningful and moving and it's really stuck with me even though I read it early on this year. A big new novel which hasn't got quite as much attention as uh, some of these other books is Palmares by Gail Jones uh, set in uh, Brazil, colonial Brazil in the 17th century and following the story of a girl that's born into slavery and and her journey to a community of freed black slaves and uh, and the uh, troubles of uh, this this community to try to stick together or reform in a number of different ways over a period of time and her individual story of survival as she meets a number of, of individuals over the, the course of her lifetime. One thing I have to point out is the grandmother in this novel is so amazing and wonderful. I'm obsessed with her and, and loved her. I think she's she's an incredible character um, that just really has stuck with me after finishing this book. The Women of Troy by Pat Barker, uh, this author's sequel to her novel The Silence of the Girls which I did really enjoy reading so I've been wanting to get to this which is a retelling of a Greek mythology uh, immediately following uh, the fall of the city of Troy and um, but through the perspective of a, a number of women um, that was at the heart of this this battle and so sort of reclaiming this mythology from a more feminist perspective. Another literary sequel is O oh William by Elizabeth Strout. Uh, this is the third book in her series of novels about her fictional character Lucy Barton who is a writer and a memoirist um, who's had a very complicated life who was born into extreme poverty and then is sort of uh, raised up to a sort of middle class level and in this novel she's reconnecting with her first husband um, after the death of her second husband and their complicated relationships with each other but also re-examining her past and her very complicated past. I have to admit this isn't my favorite uh, novel by Elizabeth Strout but Elizabeth Strout's writing is always worth reading and I, I really enjoyed and thought um, there's there's many thoughtful aspects to this novel. The Book of Form and Emptiness by Ruth Ozeki um, which has quite a, a wild storyline um, about a 13-year-old boy whose father has died and who um, amidst his grieving starts to hear voices from inanimate objects um, including books um, so it, it does sound like quite a whimsical story but it is one that I've been really wanting to, to read. Um, I really enjoyed uh, her previous novel um, but again this is another quite long book so um, it's just finding the time to read it. The Magician by Calm Toybin and I've been meaning to get to this book for, for so long. It's been sitting in my immediate TBR pile like just over there for um, you know ever since it was first published. Um, this is about the, the life of Thomas Mann and um, 
and following him over the course of uh, many years and, and through the Great War. And uh, yeah, just one I've been wanting to read so much because I love his his writing and especially um, his, the, his novel about Henry James and fictionalizing Henry James' life. So I'm very keen to see what he does with another author's life. Harlem Shuffle by Colson Whitehead, the story of a furniture salesman in 1960s New York City um, who gradually gets drawn into a life of crime. And uh, this is a novel that's been appearing on a lot of like best books of the year lists, but an enough people have said to me personally that um, they really didn't enjoy this novel and um, that it's slightly put me off from reading it or at least like put it on made me put it to the side, you know, for the time being, as we do with certain books that we think, well, I'll probably get to that at some point, but actually I'm not sure I will. I'm, I'm not, I bet if I did read this, I would really enjoy it because I hear it's a really atmospheric read and, and I've really enjoyed uh, Whitehead's fiction um, that I've read in the past. But uh, but yeah, it's just a question of when to get to it. Painting Time by Melis de Carangal, uh, who's a French author. And uh, this is such a beautiful cover. Um, this is a story about art students and an, an, an art student that uh, takes up the form of trompe l'oeil painting and um, through that um, looks at sort of the history of art. Um, it sounds like a gorgeous story and it's, it is a book that I've been really wanting to get to. Treckle Walker by Alan Garner. I'm sort of surprised I've not heard of this book uh, because um, this is uh, about an introspective young mind trying to make sense of the world around him and uses a mixture of, of folklore and mythology I and mean, it sort of sounds like a, a fascinating story and one that I'd really enjoy. Cloud Cuckoo Land by Anthony Doerr, uh, which sounds like a truly epic novel uh, starting 500 years ago in Constantinople and a girl in the city that, that is learning to, to read and uh, skipping forward more to the present day uh, to a library in Idaho and then going into the, the future and an interstellar uh, ship that's traveling through through space um, this it sounds like quite a wild story and and one a number of people have asked me if I've read but um but that I haven't got time to yet a shock by Keith Ridgeway this has been one of my great reading joys recently and it was nominated for the Goldsmiths Prize this year um, which is a prize that looks at sort of ex more experimental fiction or fiction that pushes the molds of, of what the novel is and um, this is more a collection of interconnected short stories um, all centered around a number of people living in South London um, but is does so in such like a compelling way and looking at their different psychologies and points of view of lives and how they form their community and um, their insights into each other's lives or their mis misunderstandings of each other's lives and it does so in just such a mesmerizing way um, that yeah I hope that um, more people will read this great book. The Promise by Damon Galgett, this year's Booker Prize winner and another epic story about a white South African family following them in the years before and after apartheid and the inherent racism um, within this family and how that feeds into a promise which is broken year after year. It is such a compelling and, and thoughtful story um, that uses a very unique structure but is, is also very confrontational to, to the reader to, to make them think and, and question their own values and points of view. The Fortune Men by Narifa Muhammad, uh, which is a fictional reimagining of a great historical injustice when a merchant, a Somali born merchant seaman uh, named Mahmoud in 1960s in Wales was tried and convicted and uh, sentenced to death um, for a murder which he didn't commit. And it explores his life as well as the um, very diverse community in uh, Cardiff at, at that time and uh, it is such a meaningful and impactful story. Light Perpetual by Francis Spufford, uh, another novel that's set in South London and uh, but this is a historical novel that begins uh, during the Blitz in World War II and a bomb that lands in South London killing a number of, of people and this is you know based on a real bombing from that time and a memorial that the, the author saw to this bombing and just a 
sort of list of names, and he fictionally reimagines what if uh, a number of the children that died in this bombing hadn't died, and it follows their lives over the course of a number of years in, in quite a compelling way, um, but is a novel that I didn't fully love because um, I think some of the, the storylines are more interesting than, than other ones, um, but overall it is quite an effective historical novel. China Room by Sanjeev Sahoda. This is such a, a moving and powerful novel with a dual narrative, uh, one side of which is set in rural Punjab in, in the early 20th century and a woman who, who marries um, a man um, who's uh, has two other brothers and she doesn't know which of these men um, she's actually married and following her storyline but also the storyline of one of her descendants um, much later in the century when he travels from England back to this area of Punjab to um, to this farm um, to explore that, that history and so you see this physical landscape in this house through these two different perspectives and the way this, this builds over time is, is so emotional and effective that I, I think this is an incredible novel. Second Place by Rachel Cusk. No One Is Talking About This by Patricia Lockwood. Yes, make the joke. Everyone is talking about this. Oh. Lester by Raven Leilani. I loved this novel. I, I read it early on this year and I'm still thinking about it. Um, the story of a young black woman that gets involved in a relationship with an older married white man and his wife and their adopted daughter, how she sort of infiltrates their, their lives and uh, the very complicated relationships between all of them, um, what this says about modern America and uh, racial relationships relations uh, is so moving and impactful and uh, and the story is just so juicy and delicious. Assembly by Natasha Brown, a, a novel which is quite short but you know talking about like all big novels it, it shows that you don't need uh, hundreds of pages in order to to make a really impactful and moving story. Um, so this is about a young black woman in uh, England uh, who works in the banking sector and following her life and her relationship um, with a, a privileged white man and uh, how she goes um, to the, the family estate um, to attend a party there and following her perspective is, is so moving and, and insightful and this is written in such a beautiful and poetic style that I, I was just completely drawn into this story. The Manning Tree Witches by A.K. Blakemore, uh, which is a novel uh, set in the, the witch trials in mid 17th century um, England and uh, following uh, the perspective of, of a girl whose mother is accused of being a witch and um, other members, female members of the community that are accused of being a witch and, and some uh, men in the community as well and uh, so uh, there's a witch fight general. It's all very sinister and creepy and eerie. It's it's a very effective historical novel. I, I didn't wholly love it but um, but I found it uh, really impactful and, and enjoyed reading it. Keeping the House by Taja Sin uh, which is a novel about the heroin trade in North London and a, a family of Turkish origins. I'm following their their story. Um, it is a book that I have been really meaning to get to. Open Water by Caleb Azuma Nelson, uh, one of, another one of the great debut uh, novels of, of this year and another very short but very effective novel uh, about a young uh, black couple uh, living in London uh, in the present day and um, who are both artists and uh, the, the struggle of their relationship and um, there's a lot in this novel about masculinity and um, social relationships and uh, yeah it's, it's a very effective and, and moving novel that's written in a really unique way. It's written in the second person, which you don't often get many novels that are written in that style, but it's really effective um, how it does so. Mrs. Death, Mrs. Death by Selena Godin, a novel with a tricksy title and that has a really beautiful, just gorgeous cover. Um, it's the story of a troubled young writer um, who strikes up a relationship with death um, that takes a physical form of, of a woman. And uh, so, yeah, it sounds like such a fantastical story 
story and one that I've been really wanting to get to. A Burning by Mega Mujumdar, a novel which is about a far fire bombing that occurs on a train in India and uh, how hundreds of people are killed in this and a young woman, a working class woman, who is on that train that is accused of being part of this act of terrorism and follows her trial as well as the perspectives of a couple of other people that are um, associated with her and uh, following their, their different storylines and perspectives. And this is such a heartbreaking novel. Um, I thought it was well done, um, but it is one that is really difficult um, to read because what happens is is so terrible um, that yeah I, it, it's all the more heartbreaking because you grow to feel real affection with some of the the characters but then those characters act in a way um, which is uh, really immoral and and horrible and um, so it does say something quite powerful about like the layers of society and the, the way that that power and influence work um, but uh, but yeah it's, it's just so heartbreaking. How to Kidnap the Rich by Rahul Reina. This is a novel I've been really wanting to get to because it sounds like such a, a thrilling story um, about blackmail and grotesque wealth and reality television. Um, so I think this would be a really enjoyable um, read to, to get to over the winter period. Pity the Beast by Robin McLean. This is a, a novel which I hadn't heard of before this list. Um, it's been very strongly compared to Cormac McCarthy's work in and that's it's a um, a feminist western um, that includes uh, sexual violence and vengeance, and it's a story which stretches back to prehistory. Sorrow and Bliss by Meg Mason. I know a lot of people have been talking about this this novel about a couple and a, a woman who feels like there's something wrong in her life, but her husband assures her that everything is fine, and so following their their story. Um, so yeah, this is a book that I have been really wanting to get to. The the Hummingbird by Sandro Veronese, a novel that I absolutely hated and I made a whole video talking about why I dislike this novel so much. I, I think there, there are so many things wrong with it and it just completely missed the mark for me. My Phantoms by Gwendolyn Riley. This is a novel which I, I consciously haven't read um, because Gwendolyn Riley's novel First Love I, I hated so much that it just put me off from reading this author ever again though I know she's been much acclaimed and um, so so a lot of people uh, love her writing but I I just uh, yeah had such an issue with that book that I haven't picked this up um, but it, it's a story about a mother and daughter and the mother is terminally ill and it follows the story of their relationship and and the, the last dregs of their relationship towards the end of the mother's life. Dark Neighborhood by Vanessa Onwemezi. And this is a book of short stories, um, and it's a very short book, uh, but I haven't got to reading it yet. I, I did pick it up and start reading it, but I just found the, the style so alienating that I, I just didn't feel like I was in quite the right mood for it. Um, I think these stories are like a bit fantastical. And um, so, yeah, they'll just end quite experimental in their their storytelling um, but so many people have been praising this that I, I do want to give another try to these stories. English Magic by Ushi Gatward um, which is another uh, book of short stories um, that has been getting a lot of praise sort of looking at modern day England from a number of different perspectives and um, some of the stories are more surreal um, some are looking more at the the mundane details of everyday life um, but is a writer that I, I'd like to explore Lore. Sterling Carrot Gold by Isabel Wadener. This novel is so imaginative and playful and fun, uh, both in its structure and style of writing. It's kind of a modern day retelling of Franz Kafka's The Trial, uh, but involving uh, queer individuals in North London and bullfights and uh, the histories of uh, gay footballers in England. And uh, and it's, it's just such a joy to to read and it was the winner of this year's Goldsmiths Prize for Fiction uh, which I, I was discussing earlier. Burnt Coat by Sarah Hall, uh, another novel with a gorgeous cover and a story that I've been really wanting to get to as it is a very strong reaction to our current times as it's about a sculptor who retreats
treats inside while a virus is spreading outside. Um, so yeah, a, a story which um, is really reacting to our current preoccupations. The Passenger by Ulrich Alexander Boschwitz. And this is a novel that's being hailed as a great literary rediscovery uh, because it was written in 1938 um, by a Jewish man in Germany. And um, it follows the, the story of a Jewish businessman as he tries to flee uh, the, the Nazis in Germany, um, but finds himself entrapped in bureaucracy. And uh, so, you know, every once in a while, there's um, these, these novels, uh, older novels that are republished and then just sort of rediscovered. And, and this is one of those books. And finally, there is Matrix by Lauren Groff, um, which is set in 12th century in an abbey in England. And a, a woman that is uh, sort of born as a bastard in, in French nobility is uh, sent here um, in kind of exile. But there she makes a new life for herself. And I was just immediately drawn into uh, the, the wonder and um, pleasure of this story as it follows uh, queer nuns in, in this medieval time period. Uh, but then it, the story gets much more complex as her, her life goes on and we follow her as um, she establishes herself in, in the community and um, the, the, uh, the price of that power that she gains there. And uh, it's, it's yeah, just such a joy to read. And uh, so it's yeah, such a great novel. So those are all the books on the list. Um, I'd love to know if you've read any of these uh, or if you have any thoughts about them um, or if there are any of these books that you want to read and that you've been planning to get to, uh, please let me know about that in the, the comments below. Or if you have any other books that you'd like to add as um, some of the best books of the year that haven't been talked about on these lists and you think that they deserve to be talked about, I'd, I'd love to hear about those as well. Uh, but thank you for watching this and I will speak to you again soon. Bye-bye.